I'm Marissa from beautifullyorganized.com and today I want to share a few tips with you on how to get your family to help you out around the house. You know, when mum becomes the default cleaner in the household, it's like our role shifts from being parent to being servant. And I don't like that. That's not what we're here for. Sharing the workload helps you because you get some extra downtime. It helps your partner because they get confident in being able to handle things that they normally let you handle because they're worried they can't do it. And it helps your kids because it role models the fact that everybody should be working as a team and it shouldn't be one person working while everybody else puts their feet up. Everyone should get to enjoy time together and pitch in and help together. So how do we actually get them to do it? I've got 11 different ideas that I like to do in our house and I'm going to share all of them with you. Okay, step number one is to just stop tidying up after everybody else. Seriously, just stop doing it. It's really hard to stop doing it. It's so easy for me to say that. It's really hard to not do it because at first everything's going to be super messy. But you know what happens when you stop picking up after everybody else? They stop expecting you to do it. And everybody gets to a level of messiness that they're finally unhappy with. And you kind of got to let everybody get to that point. So go and close the doors. Keep one room tidy as your haven, but shut the doors everywhere else so you don't have to look at it. And make sure you give people enough time to get to that level of dissatisfaction with the mess. Another thing you could try is to actually ask for help really, really specifically. Ask the person by name, tell them the exact thing you need them to do, and tell them when you need it done by. This is going to feel really annoying because you shouldn't have to micromanage everybody, but at least it's going to get it done. And if you ask for the same thing on a regular basis, then people will start expecting that you're going to ask them to do that task. And then they'll slowly start to get used to just doing it and thinking of it themselves. So you might need to be as specific as saying, hey, Charlie, can you please put a load of towels into the washing machine, put the powder in and turn it on before you come down for dinner? Super specific. You've named the person, they have accountability now, and they know when they need to do it by. And then you remind them just as they're sitting down for dinner. Charlie, did you put the towels in the washing machine? Great, can you go and do it now before you sit down to dinner? Done. Okay, it's not that easy, it's not done once. It's gonna take a few tries, but trust me, if you stick with it, it gets easier. The third thing to do is to role model not hating doing the job yourself. So if you really, really hate doing the dishes and then you ask somebody else to do the dishes for you, they're not going to want to do them either because they can see how much you hate them. But if you start working little things into that chore that make it a little more enjoyable for you so people don't see that, you know, you hate doing it, then they're more likely to give it a go because it doesn't seem to suck as much. This can be something really easy like playing your favorite Spotify playlist while you're doing the dishes. It doesn't have to be something big. It just has to be something that makes it a little more enjoyable. Maybe your dishwashing liquid smells really nice. Maybe you've got cute rubber gloves. Maybe you've got a nice apron that you want to wear. Maybe you're not like me and old fashioned at all, but there's something else you can bring into it that makes it a little more enjoyable. Whatever it is, bring it in, let people see you enjoying that job a little bit more and then ask them to pitch in and help or spend that time with you or do it the same way that you do it. The next tip is to make tidy up time a regular part of your day at the same time every day. So you might decide that Okay, the house needs to be tidy every evening so that the kids can go to bed with tidy rooms and you can relax on the lounge and watch Netflix without mess around you. So you know tidy up time is going to be in the evening, after dinner, before bed. Okay, so maybe that's 7.30 every night. 7.30 every night is tidy up time. The expectation is there. It's super easy to remember. And at first, you're going to need to micromanage it a little bit just to make sure everybody, A, realizes it's 7.30, and B, actually does something. But once it becomes a regular habit, it's going to stick easier. And if your kids can't tell the time yet, just tell them after dinner is tidy up time or before reading time is tidy up time. The next tip is just to do it together. If you're going to bake a cake, ask somebody to help you with it. If they're not particularly interested in baking a cake with you, then just say no problem. Can you just get the flour and sugar out and put it on the counter? And then start talking to them while they do it. And then start opening the flour and sugar and sticking the bowl on the counter while you're talking. And then just go, hey, can you just grab that cup and dip it in? And yep, yep, I need three of those. And then they start doing it with you. Because kids like spending time with their parents, right? People just like spending time together. 
They might not want to do the job, but they do want to hang out with you and tell you about the latest game they're playing or something that happened at school today or just general chit chat with you to spend time with you. So if you kind of ease them in to helping you do a job like that, then you get to spend quality time together and you're having your workload at the same time. The next tip is one of my favorites. It's to add a put away box or a put away basket into every room of the house. Well, you probably don't need one in the laundry, but you know, every room that has high traffic, um, the lounge room, the toy room, the kids' bedrooms, anywhere that people's stuff tends to gather, you wanna put a really pretty basket in that room or a box, but a basket's pretty cute. And then throughout the day, as you notice a room getting a bit more untidy, like toys are left out or books are left out, you just pick those things up and stick them in the basket in that room. And then at the same time, every day, the baskets get taken care of. You could work that into your tidy up time after dinner if you want to. But yeah, it's called the put away basket. It means that your room can be relatively tidy at any point during the day. You just pick everything up and kind of chuck it in the basket. The room still looks nice. We sometimes cheat and put like a really pretty folded blanket on top of the basket. So it looks like a basket with blankets in it, but yeah. Anyway, if you want to know more about how we do the put away basket, it's in the free online workshop um, called three quick things to do to get organized today. So you can check that out. If you haven't taken the free workshop yet, I'll leave a link in the description and you can take that. But put away basket is one of my favorite tricks for getting people to help tidy up around the house and to make it easier for you. My next tip is to use the phrase when and then. Mum, can you drive me to the shops? Yes, when you've hanged your washing, then I can take you to the shops. Mum, can I please have some cake? Yes, when you put your shoes away, I can get some cake out for you. Mum, can you please help me do my hair? Yes, when you've made your bed, I'll meet you in the lounge room and we'll do your hair there. When and then, it is gold. Because you're never saying no. I mean, sometimes you have to say no, so that's fine. If you have to say no, say no. But when and then means, yes, I'm gonna help you, if you help me too. Golden. My next tip is to totally play to their strengths. If you have two kids and one kid loves vacuuming and the other hates vacuuming, you don't have to put them on a roster where every kid gets vacuuming as a job on the alternate weeks. You can just let the kid that likes to vacuum, vacuum. The other kid will like something a little bit. So maybe one kid likes vacuuming and the other kid likes feeding the pets. That's fine, they can feed the pets. I mean, if your kids both like the same thing, then yeah, roster it out and share it. But otherwise, play to their strengths. If one of your kids likes to wash up but hates drying dishes, that's fine. I don't mind drying dishes if my kid's gonna wash them for me. My next tip is to make the job as easy as possible for them to do it. So if you want your partner or your children to do more around the house, Make sure they've got tools that make it a little bit easier. Make sure those tools are easy to get out and put away again. Make sure it's easy to remember to do it. You know, just make it a little bit easier. We used to have this big clunky vacuum cleaner and I loved it because it worked really, really well. But nobody else would vacuum. It was always me because everybody else hated getting the vacuum cleaner out of the cupboard and lugging it into the room and taking the cord out and plugging it in and then pushing it across the room. So then I went on a trip away and my husband and kids brought one of those, they bought one of those light stick style vacuum cleaners where it's just, it charges all day and then you just pick it up and quickly go through all the rooms and put it back again. So I came home to the cleanest floors we've ever had and I didn't do any of them and it was just because they had a vacuum that was easy to use. Lesson learned. My next tip is gonna sound really, really obvious, but a lot of us don't think of it, including me. I didn't think of it until this year and my kids are primary school age now. And that tip is to put a bin in their bedroom. Yeah, I know, totally obvious. So instead of just, you know, random packets from pretzels or random tissues or random anything just on the floor and me having to tell the kids to put their rubbish in the bin at the end of the night, they just chuck it in the bin during the day. I know. It makes me think back and go, oh, that was pretty gross. I should have put a bin in there ages ago. It's just a little waste paper basket, but it makes such a big difference. And my last tip is my absolute favorite. This tip is gonna make your year. Actually, we might not be able to do it right now, but when we can again, it's gonna make that year. My last tip is to take some time off. Just you. Go away for two days every year. You don't have to go far, it can be local. Just go and check into a local hotel, go for two days. Do not prep 
anything before you leave. Don't prep food. Don't do all the washing. Don't make sure the calendar is all synchronized. Don't do a grocery shop. None of that. Just pack your stuff, go and enjoy a couple of days off being default parent. And what's going to happen is while you're gone, the people that are still at home have to actually take care of themselves. So don't make it easy on them. What you want is for them to be able to understand exactly how much you work, how hard you work at it, all the things that need to kind of be juggled and balanced in order for the household to run smoothly. You want them to experience what it's like having to be responsible for that. That's how people start to realize that you actually do a lot. And it gives them the confidence to know that they can handle things when you're not there. So I want every year, I want you to book in a weekend where you go away. I would prefer you do it every season, but if once a year feels like a lot, then that's fine. Once a year will do. But every year, go away for a couple of days. Don't prep anything before you go. Don't do mountains of washing when you return either. That's when you're going to say to people, great, can you put a load of washing on? Thanks. Can you hang a load of washing? Don't come back and do everything else either. You all do it together. But while you're away, you don't have to do anything and you didn't have to prep. And that builds confidence and skills and accountability. I hope you found these tips helpful. If you did, hit the like button and make sure you subscribe. I like to share lots of tips that make life easier for busy parents. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.